country. That this is the one that is the country. And if a government like For this, this nation, with a because of the political pandemic, now we got a hurricane People coming up. We don't want to go to the situation at all. The country, country. And trying to destabilize the government with all the forces. Especially some of these journalists For this nation. Because of the political pandemic. People and I know that you are going to say things about we'll the country to the people and try to destabilize the, the government with and do what they want to do. Especially some of these journalists that are here. But Mr. Prime Minister, I know you're back, bro, and you're strong. Also, we're and I know that you and your cabinet to the phone will continue Thanks. to listen to the people because that is what Hello, good evening. And do what you are going to do for the Federation of Think It and Need It. Hello? Yes, go ahead, please. You're live. Yeah, also, so we're going to go First, to, to the phone lines. lines. Thanks. Our Prime Minister, Dr. Hello, good evening. Uh, and to the main, uh, Hi, good evening. Director of Social Security. Hello? Financial yes, go ahead, please. You're live on Leadership Media. Now, Prime Minister, so, uh, I don't want Prime Minister to Prime Minister much media. Is Prime really Minister, and to the main, um, showcase, you know, highlight of Social Security for and the finance of keeping us safe during uh, this COVID-19. Now, I am one, Prime Minister, I'm happy. I don't think that's much media you continue to be really um, and your government is you know, highlighting for taking for you can you continue to lead this in so many different and ways. I am for one and you can force the fact that you continue to be nineteen pandemic and your government because of what you have done for taking the force you think you more continue to lead put in place in so many different things. We almost and you can force that which you know we can walk about now we still wear our mask because of what you have done your task and I want to Come in on that and tell to keep up the good work and continue to keep it safe. Now, um, Mr. Maynard, I heard you said that from this evening, postals will be receiving their funds up to $1,000 down until Friday. And that is good because the last time I spoke to our PM, he said that they will meet to discuss to see the way forward if the stimulus package would continue or can continue uh, if there's any changes that they would make uh, need to be made so that persons can continue to benefit. Many persons are not coming forth and saying that they are receiving that monthly payment. You know, I've seen videos circulating of persons saying they are happy that Team Unity have put this stimulus package so they can continue receiving this fund that is so needed during this crisis and for the financial secretary you keep doing a good work and you keep doing those things you have a good man then the pm and both of you are together no good finance so keep up the good work i'll currently listen and to see and hear the way forward in team to keeping us safe very much uh caller i'm going to implore um that the remaining callers be brief uh, please uh, we will stick to about one minute per call because we have we have about five callers lined up. So I'm going to go straight to the next call. Thank you. Good evening. You're live on Leadership Matters. Hi, good evening. Hello, good evening. Yes, we can hear you, sir. Go ahead, please. You're live. Okay, good evening. My name is Austin Corker. Mr. PM and Mr. Maynard... I need you all to do me a favor. I know a lot of folks are going to be mad with me, but I don't care. Let me repeat this. I don't care. A lot of persons want to take out of Social Security, and they don't want to pay into Social Security. For example, busmen and some taxi drivers. Some young entrepreneurs, they don't want to pay for Social Security. Mr. Maynard, I am saying to you and to the Prime Minister, whenever we get over this COVID-19 business, make every jackman who is employer, self-employed, pay for Social Security so that when things like these happen, then they can have an argument. But they want to argue for money, and they want to pay the money to the country. Put something in place, for example, with the um, taxi drivers. Put something in place that when they come to for the taxi license, they pay a thousand dollars. It cover the taxi license and it cover the social security for one long year. And then when things happen, they could come back to you, Mr. Maynard, because they paid it already. Have a good night. Sir. 
Good night, caller. Hello? Yeah, good night. Good, yeah, good night, Mr. Prime Minister and your guests. I just want to congratulate you on your good victory you had just the two weeks ago. And I continue to say, stay strong, stay peaceful, love your people, don't be ungrateful to them, and everything will be all right for your government and the people who are sinking. Don't waste time with the loser down in St. Paul. He was calling for the election all the time, up and down ringing a call bell in town. Now the election comes, he find all kind of irregularity to go to the court. To the court. He just holding strain. Don't bother with him. Continue, you and your cabinet, continue to look out for the people that think it's a nevis and do your best you could. So God bless you and good night. Okay, thank you. We will pause the, the phone calls um, and let uh, our, our panelists uh, re respond. Um, our, before we continue, though, our WhatsApp is uh, being inundated with questions, and so we're, we're glad um, that you have your questions, and we're very happy to accommodate you. Um, we will be giving preference to callers, so what we will do, what I will do, uh, Definitely uh, tomorrow, uh, I will follow up with the, the, the WhatsApps. Um, if we can't get to all of them tonight, we will definitely make an attempt to follow up with the WhatsApps, um, as well as Mr. Maynard and his team. Thank you so much. We will definitely get back to you if we can't accommodate all of you because I'm seeing quite a lot, okay? So uh, I will turn it over to the palace to um, give, give some re responses. Or, or just comments? Very, very quickly, I want to thank the callers, and we certainly will attempt to take as many of the calls and to provide responses to them um, tonight. I want to thank Mr. Politics for calling in and for sharing his views regarding what is happening in the country and the, how the country stands with respect to the rest of the world. The comparisons we make, and we will continue to make, are relevant comparisons. St. Kitts and Nevis does not operate in isolation to the rest of the world. And as we attempt to analyze what is happening, it is always helpful that our people take stock of what is happening elsewhere. Our successes, for example, in the fight of COVID-19, stand in stark contrast to what is happening in the United States of America. And to make reference to that is just a reference to the facts. The facts are independent of either of us. And while we are entitled to our opinion, the truth is we are not entitled to the facts. So the facts speaks for themselves. The fact speaks to the fact that St. Kitts and Nevis has done remarkably well in contrast to its peers, not just in the region, but around the world. The fact speaks to the reality that St. Kitts and Nevis, when COVID struck, was basically the best fiscally prepared country within the region. And the facts will speak to that in the near future. The fact of that reality is also borne out by the statistics we recorded from the Social Security Board, how our fiscal management had redounded to the benefit of our people, reflected in the largest number of persons employed in our federation, in the highest level of earnings being paid in our country over the last 10 years. Those are the reality that we had led not just growth, but a people-centered growth. I agree with Mr. Politics that we have to be aware of the fake news and the fake reporting by reporters who have a clear political bias. We know the reality, and I am not concerned about the fake news at this time. We have gone through the season of fake news, and we won an election. 
And my challenge and my opportunity now is to continue to manage the country of St. Kitts and Nevis in such a way that when the time come again for the people to show their preferences, there will be a distinct preference by the people of St. Kitts and Nevis for a team unity administration, which I have been leading over the past five years. The last elections reflected well that the people of St. Kitts and Nevis can discern the fake news from the reality. Again, I want to commend Bucky Gothit for his contribution and for recognizing how well we are doing in keeping the people safe. I want to commend the people, though, for understanding that this is an important moment in time and moment in history. And the people of St. Kitts and Nevis cannot let down their guard in the fight against COVID-19. Wherever it has gone in every region, it has left a trail of death, a trail of thousands of people around the world hospitalized and in pain. And millions of persons, over 30 million people around the world, have been displaced as a result of this. So that basically is a dreaded virus, and we have to be careful, and we have to be as guarded as we have been in the past so that we may consecrate the future. I want to say thank you to Rock for his congratulatory remarks, and certainly I will always be strong with the help of God, and the love for my people have no bounds or border. So thank you for that. Prime Minister, please pardon me for interrupting you. Uh, there is an overseas caller on the line, so we're happy to get to you. Good night. Hello, good night. You're live on Leadership Matters. Okay, caller, uh, you're welcome to call back again. Uh, area code 239 645 uh, We're waiting for you to call again. Uh, we're happy to, to get your calls. In, in, sure. Security. Mr. Maynard, go ahead, please. With respect to the comments from Bucky Goddard, um, I would just like to say that we are fulfilling our obligation to pay for three months in the first instance. And as you notice, we have increased the um, amount to $7 million, up to a maximum of $22 million now. Originally, it was $15 million. So, as I said before, payments for June um, will now become available from tomorrow through Friday for self-employed persons and the other employees, some 5,000 persons. Um, Mr. Coco made a very important point. We have seen an increase in the registration of self-employed persons over the past three months. Suffice it to say, some of them um, wanted to be paid, but couldn't be paid because they registered um, a bit too late. But we are continuing to encourage them to register with Social Security because something like this pandemic can happen again very, very soon. Come into the offices and register. And it is not a lot of money um, per week um, to, to get you secured um, and insured um, at um, Social Security. So I want to encourage registration, self-employed. The, the, the bus drivers in particular, um, many of those bus drivers, uh, some of them have come to ask, but they couldn't be qualified, they couldn't be eligible because they were not registered as self-employed persons. But they since have um, registered, now they are insured, and any other pandemic such as this one, they will be um, bene um, benefiting accordingly. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm getting word from an overseas uh, caller. Uh, 
he's he's whatsapping me telling me there's no answer on the overseas line mailbox is full so we're going to take a, a quick commercial break to reset and come back i will give the phone numbers again so uh, please uh, when we come back we will go straight to the phone line so please take down these numbers 466 2666 that's 466-2666-662, sorry, 8674, 662-8674, and our overseas line is 239-645-4500. We'll take a quick commercial break. Thank you for watching. Before touching the mask, Clean hands with an alcohol-based hand rub or soap and water. Take the mask and inspect it for tears or holes. Orient which side is the top side where the metal strip is. Ensure the proper side of the mask faces outwards, the colored side. Place the mask to your face. Pinch the metal strip or stiff edge of the mask so it molds to the shape of your nose. Pull down the mask's bottom so it covers your mouth and your chin. After use, take off the mask. Remove the elastic loops from behind the ears while keeping the mask away from your face and closed. To avoid touching potentially contaminated surfaces of the mask, discard the mask in a closed bin immediately after use. night again welcome to leadership matters welcome back we're going straight to the phone lines good night good night yes good night go ahead sir greetings to everyone and mr prime minister I'd like to congratulate you and all the candidates who win and those who didn't win my beloved brother no my brother so prime minister i like to see i like to know when we're going to see a revolution in agriculture in the Federation of St. Nevis. And I'd like to know when we're going to see some economic activities in Constituency 6. And when that bank, Mr. Prime Minister, that we've been talking about for years now, Mr. Prime Minister, when we're going to see the bank rehabilitated, our uh, bank, and Kansas Pasha is there. In like a man is like a wasteland. When we're going to see something done to Kansas Russia, we need some activities in constituency six, Mr. Prime Minister. We've been out in the sun, rain, dew, everything from since the days of Bradshaw. People's Action Movement, NLP, did some work. Thank you, sir. That's enough. Thank you very much. Prime I can hear the passion in your voice, and we will get to your questions. Oh, another caller, please. Hello, good night. You're on Leadership Matters. Yeah, good evening. Yeah, I'm on. Yes, sir, you are. Good night. Yeah, yeah this is Tom Fitchers. I want to congratulate the Prime Minister and all your people and the panelists. Okay, my question is that now that they're working on the road, we have a problem in Newton Ground. We're down by the school. If they could put in a drain, so when the, when the rain falls, it could disappear the water. I have already talked to the Prime Minister concerning that already, so you should have an idea what I'm speaking about. Uh, Thank you. And Good night. Good night. My dear beloved Prime Minister and his panelists, I want to thank this, our government, for what they've been doing. Our government is twin. Well, we have paid 22 million from Social Security. We are going back again and we pay the ejection of five million dollars to the agriculture. And we are better than them. We are better than the rest. And the PM. When you go on the radio, talk as you like. We are better than them. 
we have done so much. You have keep us safe. You closed on the border and nobody did. And I'm so happy. You are what God sent. Father Jesus, I beg you to protect my prime minister till the end of time. And the Lord be with you. Have a good night. Safe journey home. And take care of yourself. Thank you so much for your commendations. We have six callers on hold, so we're going to go straight back to back to back. Good night, caller. Hi, good night. And how is everyone doing? Um, I have a small concern. Um, the Prime Minister mentioned um, money that were put in development back from home ownership. I was wondering if the same way $30 million were put in development bank, if he could also make some of that funds available in national banks, at least to give persons um, flexibility to work with whichever bank they may they choose to. And secondly, with respect to um, finance, I was wondering if there's a way that persons who own businesses could get their responses from the Ministry of, of Finance a little bit more timely. Because sometimes uh, response go to the Ministry of Finance for import duty concession, and because there are no, let's say, COVID scheme to get, um, let us say, so their response is back a little bit more time. It takes too long for small businesses to get that uh, information from the Ministry of Finance with respect to their businesses. So I was wondering if Finance made their, their response a little bit timely to the Ministry of International Trade so business can be a little bit more flexible. And those are my two concerns. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, caller. Good night. Yes, go ahead, please. Yeah, good, good night, Rips of PM and company. Um, I was looking at some um, Fox Business News today, and one of the talking heads was mentioning that the United States economy is not expected to recover until um, the third quarter, the fourth quarter of um, 2021. I know our tourism comes from the, mainly from that quarter. Um, our GDP is affected to the tune of anywhere between 12 to 16 percent from tourism from North America and other places. Um, you did mention that um, the what, manufacturing is on the rebound as far as we are concerned. What about the other sources of revenue for the country? Um, how are they doing um, since tourism can be expected to be on the decline? some considerable period of, time, period of time and is there any other cons in consideration to attracting some of those factories out of China since there appears to be some kind of um, coldness between China and the United States. I'll listen up here for your comments. Thank you. Thank you. Good night caller. You're on Leadership Matters. Go ahead please. Do we have another caller? Hello, good night. Okay, so we don't. So, okay, we will start uh, answering uh, some of the questions uh, that were asked. So the first caller wanted to know uh, when will we, he asked, when will we see a revolution in agriculture? Uh, the Prime Minister um, has made mention of, has made mention of a lot of the uh, initiatives that have uh, been put in place, uh, the land uh, being made available, um, 135 acres of land have been uh, put aside, set aside, designated uh, for, for production for farmers. And um, he also mentioned um, the, the seedlings and, and, and the different services that are being provided. But he can go, he can um, discuss that. The, the, the same caller wanted to know about economic activity in constituency number six. Uh, he, he wants to know when um, he can expect to see that. He also referred to the, the National Bank um, coming back, the possibility of, of, of it uh, reopening over there. And he also mentioned Keynes's pasture. Um, someone from 
Newton ground mentioned a, a drainage issue, um, but perhaps we can follow up on that at, um, at some other point. Um, ben, another caller said that uh, money has been put into the development bank for home ownership. Uh, can um, money also be placed uh, into national bank, they're asking. Um, another caller mentioned a uh, concern about um, the timeliness of responses um, from the, the, the Ministry of, of Finance, Ministry of, of, of Trade, uh, for instance, with respect to import uh, duty concessions and other um, inquiries that, that uh, may come from small businesses. And um, the last caller mentioned the fact that um, the U.S. Is, is saying that, uh, well, analysts are saying that the U.S. economy might not recover, uh, might not rebound until the, the third quarter of 2021. The, the caller um, has expressed some concern that uh, tourism might not, well, uh, might not rebound as, as quickly as uh, some people would, would like given the situation that's happening around the globe. So what are the sources of revenue for the country um, do we have? Basically, how are the other sectors uh, doing? And he, he mentioned whether or not there's a possibility of attracting manufacturing business from China. So we'll go straight to the panel. We'll start with uh, Prime Minister Harris. Um, very quickly, in terms of the caller, um, you have given some of the responses with respect to our efforts to boost agriculture as a generator of employment of income and to boost significantly its contribution to gross domestic product. For a very long time, since sugar, the non-sugar agricultural sector has not played a significant role. When the sugar industry was closed in 2005, the greatest opportunity was provided for significant diversification, for significant development of crops, of livestock, and the fisheries sector. Regrettably, we lost a significant portion of time um, between then and now in really transforming the agricultural sector. The efforts we are making now to invest more will hopefully bear some fruits. And we have done a significant job in the last couple of months building and the platform before. The matter of National Bank taking its place in the rural community of Sadlers is one which has been on the agenda. And it is one that I have put before the board. And we had expected we would have had some action. And then COVID-19 came and put a pause with respect to that. The National Bank branch in Sadler's is significantly dilapidated, and what will be required now will be significant investment in building a modern branch in Sadler's. It is still my wish, as it is your wish, that that be done expeditiously. I believe once we have had some passing time to assess the impact of COVID-19 and the bank finances, we certainly can revisit this matter, but this matter shall not be allowed to die. In terms of economic activity number six, we want to diversify economic activity across the landscape of St. Kitts and Nevis. And in this regard, no region, indeed perhaps one should say since you phrase it in that context, no constituency shall be left behind. In the just concluded general elections, we articulated to Kevin Ninky Williams a whole list of areas in which we will engage the people of number six and the country at large. Significant investments are to be made in the development of a brand new fisheries complex in Depe, and we shall advance that. We have shall also advance opportunities for creating spaces for commercial and industrial activity in number six. 
our housing build-out shall impact that constituency in a significant way. And clearly, with the Ramada Hotel about to get started, hopefully in the not-too-distant future, we will see a significant boost in socioeconomic activity in St. Christopher No. 6. St. Christopher No. 6 is also an important agricultural community and we shall continue to invest in agriculture significantly in terms of the number of farmers that have been helped so far, a significant number of them. In terms of the geographical um, layout hailed from that particular region. The matter of the drainage problem at Newton Ground, which has been raised earlier, it is one which we shall refer, and I'm inviting you, Valencia, to take note of this and to refer this matter to the Public Works uh, Department. There were some other issues. I will allow the Financial Secretary to deal with the matter of the speed, the efficiency with which matters which come to the Ministry of Finance as they relate in particular to small and medium-sized businesses are being addressed. The matter of the role of National Bank is a significant one vis-a-vis -vis the Development Bank. Some of the issues that drive the choice of institution are related to the ease with which policy can be implemented. And Development Bank was created, and we should never forget the history of these institutions. Development Bank throughout the Caribbean were organized as instruments to facilitate better coordination of government policy initiative to sectors that had hitherto been underserved by existing financial institutions. And therefore, the ordinary regime of the financial institutions, a royal bank, a national bank, they do not readily respond with the same agility and flexibility in terms of some of the initiatives that government will have to take. When we, for example, introduce a first start program, we can say to Development Bank, we want you to run this program, and we say that we do not want the interest rate to be higher than X percent. It is difficult to give that kind of dictate, direction, and guidance to commercial banks. They operate under a different set of paradigm, a different set of policy prescriptions. Development banks came out of that inflexibility in financial institution, governed largely by a profit motive for a next set of institution to have priorities better aligned with the government to serve hitherto underserved entities in the community. And that is why, for example, in other jurisdictions, they have developed Agricultural Development Bank because they recognize their agricultural sector is underserved and that it is very, very difficult for farmers to get loans. And you look at the banking portfolio of the commercial banks. Tell me how much loans Royal Bank would have given to the agricultural sector and National Bank and Scotia Bank, now Republic Bank. The reality is that those institutions have not been as readily responsive to some of the dictates of nation building as a development bank would be. And the development banks throughout the region were created for that purpose to insert into the economic life new entrants, new people who hitherto were not well served. We certainly will continue always to review government policy sensitive to the evolution of times and the evolution of interests in terms of the instruments that are being used to aid our policy development. I return to the Financial Secretary to address the other matter a put to the Ministry of Finance directly and to perhaps express a view with respect to tourism and the other areas of economic activity and economic growth that could, or revenue generating sectors of the economy. I would want, though, not to crowd out 
but to say that our CBI program has been one of those programs and initiatives. While it has been slowed by COVID, it has retained some level of resilience and we are heartened by it. In her own presentation, the financial secretary did identify this particular sector in one in which we shall infuse greater deliverables through, for example, bringing new products on stream, and secondly, too, by improving the legislative regime that protects the country's reputation, that protects those that are going to be investing in the program. But without further ado, I would ask Mrs. Hazel to give a view on those matters that had been put. Thank you, Honorable Prime Minister. Um, I would start where you left off, um, to the caller who express the, the viewpoints about additional revenue coming, streams coming to the government. Yes, the CBI program continues to be an important source of revenue for the government. We also can count on the efforts made by the government to keep the construction industry going. We also see a prospects for the future in terms of ICTs and agriculture once we are able to turn around the actual production cycle in the sector. On, in terms of the comment in, um, on contraction in the U.S. economy, yes, we do rely heavily on our tourism um, um, product coming from the United States. However, we would prefer to be optimistic in that the forecast shared earlier um, coming from the United States as the viewpoint shared by the IMF in its most recent publication of the World Economic Outlook, we are guardedly optimistic that the U.S. economy would turn around in 2021. We saw that it is expected for the U.S. economy to grow by negative 8% this year. However, the prospects are positive for 2021 with a 4.8% growth rate being projected for the United States. And so, as I indicated, we remain guardedly optimistic that our tourism um, sector would also return to positive outlook. For the young lady who spoke about efficiency and turnaround time for small businesses, I would commit that for the majority of cases, the turnaround time is efficient. But however, sometimes we do encounter difficulties with some applications with lack of important information to make an adequate assessment. However, notwithstanding this, we welcome your comment and uh, to assure you that the orientation for the ministry is towards service of our people and therefore we would use your comment to take a look inwards to see how best we can adjust and make sure that we are actually delivering in a timely manner. Thank you. Okay, I'd like to go to some WhatsApp questions. Uh, one person wants to know, uh, he says, good night. I would like to know when will um, the hotels and so uh, be open? I work in the tourism industry and I've been home for a while now. Okay. Um, yes, and then um, someone has said, um, okay, can the PM let us know for those of us who are still out of a job due to COVID, will we continue to get the $1,000 for the upcoming months? 
And then someone also said, I have filled in two forms online for the 1000 stimulus help and I, and I have not received anything to date and no one contacted me to inform me whether I was eligible or not. Does that mean I won't be getting anything? And if so, will it be backdated? All right. Thanks. Um, very quickly, and what I would advise if those that, that I said can print the WhatsApp questions, pass them to the panelists, it perhaps would lead to greater efficiency um, as persons can determine those questions pertinent to their particular line. With respect to the hotel opening, this is a matter that we will know as time passes, meaning the borders basically are closed. The borders are closed for health reasons. A determination has to be made when it is safe for us to open the borders. And that is a matter that our CMO, Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Hazel Lords, and her associates in particular, Dr. Cameron Wilkerson, are, and Mr. Abdias at the NEOC are constantly engaged. They have had discussion this week, last week, with stakeholders in the tourism sector. They have had or should have had discussion today with representatives from the Ministry of Tourism. So that is a work in progress. And as we have information on which we could put greater certainty, we will certainly advise. We look at what is happening within the region to help guide our own decisions and we see in cases where countries have opened up the consequences have not been so pleasant and in a number of them there has been a return of the COVID-19 and so that tells us that we have to be relatively cautious while of course being sensitive to the need for the economy to get back to near normalcy. We have always put the health of our people first in the fight against COVID-19. We shall continue to do so. Nonetheless, we will always be ready to seize the opportunity to ensure that St. Kitts and Nevis is ready to do business when the world at large is ready to do so. All over the world, there still remain restrictive uh, restrictions in relation to travel. And in that regard, we are not an exception. And we are working and establishing the relevant protocols that will protect us. So we will have more information on that. I shall say that we are in almost, or at least, daily contact with some of the hotel operators, Koi Resort, Park Hyatt, etc. And we have a sense of their own thoughts with respect to the reopening. As soon as things are at a better level of certainty, we will be able to do more. I should add that workers and employees in this particular hotel, they have also been um, contacted and they are aware of some approximate dates, because that is the best as you can have, approximate time for the opening of these hotels, and the majority of them are looking at the last quarter opening. That is, of course, being dependent upon things not worsening in some of the key critical areas from which we source our tourists. United North America, in particular the USA and Canada, Europe including the United Kingdom, and indeed our own region. We shall, and most of us are aware, that the difficulties being faced by regional airlines and the potential consequence that that holds for the way forward for inter-regional travel, which is significant in the context of St. Kitts and Nevis and accounts for about 20% of our um, tourism inflow. How long will the COVID benefit last? We are hoping that by and large as we map out a pathway, a clear path for re-engagement of persons in the economy, less demands will be made for COVID resources. Already, for example, we have moved 
from a position where almost an entire country had been shut down to a steady position where the country is open seven days per week, where almost every entity can now engage in economic activity, where at least 73% of the workers in the manufacturing sector are now back out to work. With these developments, we expect to see that reflected in a reduction in demand for COVID benefit. Clearly, if you are back out to work and you're reaching the threshold of $1,000 per month, you will not continue to receive the COVID payout from Social Security. It is intended to assist people who by and large had had a significant fall in their incomes and in particular had been unemployed and therefore not receiving flows. So as the economy opens up, as more persons are now put back on the breadline in employment, we expect to see less persons really having to rely upon COVID benefit. With respect to the question raised, about filling in online, Mr. Maynard is here. He's ready to provide you with a solution. Maybe if you're lucky, he might even give you his cell number so that you can call and he can get the particulars of your name, address, former employer, etc. But let's see how lucky we are, Mr. Maynard. Certainly that person can come to my office tomorrow morning, 9 a.m., ask for Ms. Kimoy or Antonio Maynard, and we'll uh, make sure that your payment is, is um, properly researched and get your monies in your bank account as soon as possible. We can boast and we can say that we had about a 90% success rate in rolling out of these funds. However, some persons' applications fell through the cracks. Um, and the, this is for um, a number of reasons. Persons actually have supplied incorrect bank account numbers, um, incorrect banking details, and other um, wrong information on the application forms. And so therefore, we, we found that um, a lot of um, payment actually came back um, from the banks. And we actually had to write um, checks for a number of persons. But I can assure you that once you are eligible and once you have applied before today, actually, because um, let me announce again that today was the deadline uh, for you to apply for this very important stimulus um, fund. We believe that most people, 99% of the persons who are eligible have applied and about 90% have received their, their, their monies. Of course, we have paid out $22 million. Um, by tomorrow, by Wednesday, Thursday, we would have paid out $22 million. We would have paid over 8,000 persons. So, but a few persons fell through the cracks, but I can assure you that you will be paid retroactively once you can come to our offices and we'll sort out your, your application and your payments. Thank you very much. Mr. Maynard, I have two additional questions via WhatsApp that you can answer. Sure. Uh, the first one is, as one of the tourism-dependent citizens affected by the COVID-19 pandemic who is at home for three months with assurance by my employer that I am still employed but is benefiting from the social relief stimulus package, am I eligible for a severance package? And then... That question would be best put to the Labor Department. I want to let you know. Okay, and then... <laughs> right away. <laughs> and then my question is, after being home for three months layoff, how much longer I have to wait to get a termination letter from my employer? Again, that question is best put um, to the Department of, of Labor. 
We will follow up uh, tomorrow with uh, the WhatsApp, yes. uh, uh, the person who sent in the WhatsApp. I will definitely follow up with you tomorrow for sure. Do we have any more um, phone calls? If not, uh, yes. Okay, so we don't have any more phone calls. Um, I have a, a, a question uh, for the, the, the Prime Minister um, and also for the, the Financial Secretary and the, the Deputy Financial uh, Secretary, uh, Mrs. Sylvia Manning-Gums, uh, can also uh, contribute to this. So, Prime Minister, when we look at uh, what the COVID-19 modeling is suggesting, for instance, in the United States, which is one of our most important tourism partners, it appears as though we need to prepare for the, the long haul. For instance, many U.S. states have halted their reopening and imposed new pandemic orders. Florida, for instance, where we got direct flights and cruises from, uh, being one of them. Granted, your administration has engaged in strong fiscal management and effective stewardship of the public purse, hence why you've been able to mount the largest stimulus package in the region. Indeed, we are in one of the strongest financial positions in the region, but what do you want to say to the people to encourage them to cope with these difficult circumstances, financially, emotionally, and otherwise? Uh, thank you. The financial secretary will have a first go at that particular matter. Um, I, I think that um, I could be consistent in saying that from the standpoint of the Ministry of Finance, we continue to take a posture of um, guarded optimism in that we are not going to wallow in negativity, so to speak, about the prospects. We recognize that there, are uncertain, there is a lot of uncertainty in the global economic sphere with, in terms of the U.S. However, we are conscious as well that in St. Kitts and Nevis, a lot has been done to protect our federation and the results of our COVID numbers, our success in flattening the curve has indeed put us in a position where we are able to engender a certain level of confidence and so if there are persons in the United States who are very much interested in coming to the Caribbean region for a vacation, most definitely St. Kitts and Nevis would be identified as one of those places where people would want to visit. I think though that the opportunity is ready for us to concretize our approach, concretize the protocols that um, would be necessary to welcome our guests back to our shores. We also have to make sure that individually in each of our households, we continue to observe the protocols. We cannot overemphasize the need for us to continue to observe the protocols. We can ill afford the scenario, the pessimistic scenario that I highlighted before, where we have shown good success, have gone through our deep contraction, and now we are going to be experiencing an uptick in terms of a recovery, and then bam, we let down our guards, we stop doing the social distancing, we stop observing proper hygiene, we stop observing the wearing of the mask in situations where we are not able to practice social distancing. 
And so as basic as these things may sound, they are the crux of the matter of making sure that St. Kitts and Nevis is ready for opening. The other aspects of the fears about importing um, COVID again, we have to make sure that we put the, proto the proper protocols in place. And the reality is that we have to learn to coexist with COVID. How do we do that? I do not have all the answers. But the basic protocols must be absorbed because it is one of the key success factors in our recovery. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to get the Deputy Financial Secretary in, uh, Mrs. Uh, Sylvia Manning Gums. Thank you, Madam Moderator. And good night, one and all. Good night, Prime Minister and the other panelists. Um, just to add to what the Financial Secretary had indicated, um, this is a good time for us to embrace change. Um, we would have seen in recent times since the lockdown, um, we've had all the virtual meetings, we've had virtual parties, we've had virtual everything. And it's time that we, COVID is gonna be around for a while. So it's time that we have to look at how we do business, it's a change in how we do business. We have to focus more now on productivity where persons can now work from home. You don't always have to be in the office eight to four. Um, productivity and competitiveness, those are what are going to be key and to help to get us out of, out of this. We have to use the technology more, but at the same time, we have to be cognizant of the, our demographic. We have persons of all um, age ranges, the young, not so young, the elderly, and we have to be cognizant that we cannot leave out any um, particular group of persons. But it's going to be a new way of doing business it should improve over time. I don't think that we're going to ever get back to what we know as the normal, but hopefully when we come out of this, it will be for the better at some point. In the meantime, for us as the, on a personal level and for the government as well, what we um, are encouraging is for persons to examine the needs versus the wants. At this point, we have to look and see what it is we really need. The wants will come at a later time. Um, it is not business as usual, as I said. It's a new way of thinking, and we have to use what we have to our disposal. We have talent throughout the Federation and in the diaspora that we can bring to the fore and we need to make the best of the situation. Thank you. Thank you. Could I quickly add that one of the challenge which we face is what other sectors or niche mm -hmm. could a small island state develop that will provide income for its people, provide job opportunities in a sustainable way. Again, because we have the constraint of small size, there are not too many opportunities that are available for Smile Island to engage in. However, having regard to the play of technology in the landscape, ICTs, what has happened in the virtual world, we have to begin to look at other engagements in the field of ICT what high-end services, for example, can we begin to create a niche for St. Kitts and Nevis, which allow our people to, again, get well-paying jobs 
and to do interesting, intellectually stimulating work. We have to again look at new areas. And in our manifesto and throughout the campaign, we began the conversation about a new ministry targeting entertainment, entrepreneurship, and talent development. Talent development is what the Deputy Secretary ended on, that within our country and across the citizenship of St. Kitts and Nevis being held here and elsewhere, we have a talented pool of people, and they must be engaged in a constructive way to assist in the task of nation building. Entertainment is a billion dollar industry, very significant throughout the world, has impacted significantly in some countries of the region better than most. Jamaica, for example, has had the lead in terms of its people earning significant sums. St. Kitts and Nevis, we are no less talented and we can engage more directly in entertainment, in the film industries. And all of this perhaps will provide another layer, another buffer um, on which we can rely in times of difficulty. We also have again to look at telemedicine. This was something several years ago. The country had begun a conversation largely as a result of the work of a former Governor General Sir Cuthbert Sebastian, we need to move this platform in a more health conscious world. Because again, with all the interplay of ICTs, of technology, and the mobility of skills through that way, St. Kitts and Nevis perhaps has an opportunity. With the built out of um, universities engaged in health services, will the built out of new um, entities engaged in the provision of health, I think that this area will become much more alluring in the not too distant future. So these are some of the alternatives and other areas which can certainly supplement what we are doing in St. Kitts and Nevis. Help us to generate revenue. Help us to create job opportunities for our people and to have the multiplier effect um, allowing this to change the landscape of St. Kitts and Nevis. So we are thinking through these things, and at least here we have begun, not just the conversation, we have begun to look at the institutional response by creating a new ministry which will focus on how we could bring these particular new areas, new areas in terms of looking to them, for creating meaningful employment, high paying job, and foreign exchange for St. Kitts and Nevis. In that regard, we may well have a head start, and we will look to see how quickly we can build out this new ministry and set it to work to the advantage and benefit of the good people of St. Kitts and Nevis. Thank you very much. And I have uh, one comment on, on WhatsApp. It says, uh, blessed good evening to the Honorable Prime Minister, Dr. Timothy Harris, distinguished panelists. I would like to see considerations be given to persons who have and continue to contribute to Social Security be allowed to borrow towards their contributions made or used as collateral for business loans. Just an idea for the appropriate personnel. Prime Minister, great job on your leadership and the management of our economy. God bless you and your team unity administration. And it certainly cannot be said enough how much Prime Minister Harris and his team unity administration have led on COVID-19 uh, policy. Uh, pretty early on, uh, we have, for instance, mandated the wearing of masks, which in other parts of the world has become a, a little bit of a political football. But uh, Prime Minister Harris has been pretty decisive 
um, on, on this and, and other uh, matters with response to, to COVID-19. So we uh, thank him very, very much for his, his steady leadership. At this point, I will uh, turn to the panelists to make their uh, any closing remarks um, that, that they have. And uh, we'd like to end on an optimistic uh, note for the, for the future vision of, of the future of St. Kitts. So uh, St. Kitts and Nevis, the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. So I'll invite uh, Mr. Uh, let's go with um, Mr. Maynard first. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. And let me comment on the question that was asked about the idea um, to have loans against personal social security contribution. And let me make it very clear that the Social Security Fund is in a very strong and sound financial position. This is according to the 12th Actuary Review, which was tabled in Parliament last year by the Honorable Minister for Social Security. And based on the audited financial statement for 2018, the total reserve stands at over $1.6 billion. And so the Board of Directors will be considering several ideas in the reform recommendations um, in the short, medium, and long term um, mo moving forward. And that might be one of the ideas that might be um, considered. To wrap up, on behalf of the Minister, Board of Directors, Management and Staff at the Social Security Board, I would like to express sincere gratitude to all of our stakeholders and partners, including the Department of Labor, the many insured employees and employers, as well as the different companies and institutions and the now former Minister for Social Security, the Honorable Vance Amory, who have worked with us tirelessly over the past four months in rolling out these crucial payments under very difficult circumstances. We are thanking you all for your patient tolerance and understanding. Let me also take this opportunity to welcome our new and esteemed Minister for Social Security, the Honorable Eugene Hamilton, the Board of Directors and Senior Management is looking forward um, in working with you very closely um, in this regard. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'll ask the Financial Secretary, Mrs. Hillary Hazel, to um, give her closing remarks. Thank you. Um, in closing, I would like to draw attention to the fact that past fiscal discipline by the government has brought us to a point where the government is able to respond in the way that it has in terms of keeping the country safe, being able to expend the resources that are necessary to purchase and to support the health sector, purchase personal protective gear and to support the health sector in general. Up to this point, the government has not had to rely on loan financing to carry out and to carry the costs of the government's response to date. This is indeed a tremendous success. The government is therefore committed to ensuring that it plays a lead role in partnership with the private sector in moving our country forward. We therefore invite any additional comments that would help to frame the path towards recovery and transformation. We do not have all the ideas, and it is by bringing all the ideas to the table 
that we would achieve success. And so I would want to see this evening session as the start of a conversation that must continue. Thank you. Thank you very much. Prime Minister Harris. Very much, and let me start by again thanking our beloved citizens, residents, and well wishers for calling in on tonight's Leadership Matters. Leadership does, in fact, matter a great deal, and we had an opportunity in the last elections to evaluate the leadership that will work for the future. I contrasted in the last general election the picture what the country face, an opportunity to move forward in leap and bounds, or an opportunity to go back. And I feel confident that in the choice in the last elections, the people of St. Kitts and Nevis indicated in overwhelming numbers that their preference is to go forward to the safer and stronger future outlined by my administration. I want to say thank you. It is now a sacred duty and honor and a privilege for me to lead a team of individuals who can, in fact, deliver on the promise and the commitment to make our people safer. Safer in terms of our own security. And we have been doing an excellent job, and I hail all the security forces. Safer in terms of our provision of health care. And our health sector now stands at the best ever in terms of its ability to deliver efficient and effective services to our people. We have started to build out our community health care facilities. Just last week, or was it on Monday, we had the opening of the Tabernacle Health Center, which has become the model as to the special requirements for the delivery of health care that will put the preventive arm out so that our people will not have to become hospitalized and engage in deep suffering. The prevention is better than the cure. And indeed, in our fight against COVID-19, we have put prevention against the cure. For the cure will be painful, and the cure could at times fall short of what is required, as we have seen around the world, result in death, resulting then in death. The stronger future is about a stronger economy. It is about putting every able-bodied man and woman to work, to support himself, herself, his or her family, and the community at large, and we are still committed to do that. The actions that we have taken during the COVID-19 and which we are proposing to take our country forward would certainly lead to greater empowerment of our people in a wide range of areas. Tonight we began that conversation about some new and important areas in which we can become involved with as a country. What the COVID-19 has shown by and large, that when danger and pandemics and crisis come, we have as a people to look at ourselves first and foremost. The financial secretary made a major point of note that in all that we have been doing, in mobilizing $120 million of commitment to fight COVID, we have not borrowed one cent. We have not borrowed one cent because we have managed the country well over the last five years. We have managed the country and we have been developing it. And as a result, no one has to ask where the money gone. The money is reflected in the build out of our economic infrastructure, our road network, our second cruise pair, our health infrastructure, our education infrastructure, our ability to respond to our students who are challenged in countries more powerful than we are. 
where we were forced to bring them back home to shelter them from hardship. We have been doing all these things because we have been prudent in managing the fiscal resources of the country. Going forward, we have to, as a people, find the strength within always to do the best we can each day. The best we can today because tomorrow may be too late. And that is something we have to learn and we have to practice each one of us. Sometimes we are waiting for tomorrow. Sometimes we are waiting for perfection. Sometimes we are waiting for more resources. When the urgency and the imperative of the times demand we do the best we can today, we be more resourceful. COVID-19 has taught us a good lesson. Sometimes the numbers are too large. So COVID-19 says that work with less people. Let people work at home. And only those who are necessary for conducting the operations should be at work. A wonderful story has emerged about our size of our workforce. The resources we are spending and whether we are getting value for money. And that is something over time as we take stock of where we are as a people and as a country. As we take stock of the need for greater production and productivity. We have to evaluate again how we are doing things. Are there better ways? And usually the answer will be there are better ways. As a student of history, I recall the situation in the turbulence of Jamaica when the slaves were rioting as they usually would in Jamaica. And the message went out to the queen that your, as it were, subjects needed your help. The queen responded that it was to their industry and ingenuity to which the subjects must look for their own amelioration. And that response has stuck with me for a very long time. At first, I thought that the queen then was a little bit callous to have said to a suffering people that it is to your industry and ingenuity to which you must look. I have come many years after having we looked at it again to notice how correct the queen was. We must always look to ourselves as a people to find that pathway to a better future. And yet, as a new independent nation, we continue the onerous task of nation building. I too wish that more citizens and residents of St. Kitts and Nevis would look to their industry, their hard work, their understanding about the principle of a fair day's work for a fair day's pay, an understanding that laziness will not prosper and laziness will not help us in the task of nation building, an appreciation that we are a talented people. And if we are talented, then we look to our ingenuity could we find a synonym? Could we look to our creativity? Could we look to our imagination? Because again, we must begin a task by imagining and dreaming of that stronger and safer future. And not only must the people in St. Kitts and Nevis imagine and dream of beautiful things, our institutions must be part of this reimagining of what the good life constitutes in St. Kitts and Nevis. So we send out the message to Social Security with this 1.6 billion, was it that that he said? In reserve. One point what? Six. Six billion in reserve to begin the conversation with him. To see how this vast pool of resources can be used in a prudent way support our efforts at nation building while still preserving resources to meet the demands 
the liabilities as they crystallize by those who would have contributed to the scheme. I want to end on a final note of history. When Marcus Garvey visited us in 1937, he said that St. Kitts was a beautiful country. Not just beautiful in terms of the fiscal layout and the fiscality of the country, but beautiful by the message, the dreams, as he interacted with our people. And I think that was an important one. He went on to say that we can make St. Kitts and Nevis our Garden of Eden. The Garden of Eden is a metaphor for many things. A country that is self-sufficient. A country that is feeding itself with the fruits and the vegetables and the fishes. A country that is providing for the young and for the old. A country that has a reservoir of talent to take it to the next stage of development. I implore every boy and girl, every man and woman, St. Kitts and Nevis, to have a dream about creating your own Garden of Eden, your special place, and by extension, help me, help Team Unity, help our country to realize that inspiration that Marcus Garvey left with us way back in 1937. We are going to make St. Kitts and Nevis the model of the best man in small island state. So thank you again for participating tonight. To God we give all thanks and glory. Thank you, Mr. Prime Minister, for those very uplifting words. On behalf of all of you, our large and dedicated audience, I say a very special thanks to the Prime Minister and the other esteemed members of the panel. On behalf of all of us, we thank everyone watching and listening for making Leadership Matters, Appointment Television, as well as such a huge success on radio and online. Tonight, I'd like to especially recognize matron nurse Sylvia Garnett, who watches every week from Florida. The Prime Minister referenced the renaming ceremony that was held on Friday in her honor. So uh, we're happy uh, to have her, her um, patriotism. She's so energetic and spirited in her patriotism. And uh, uh, she's just energetic in general. Every morning when I wake up, I see her um, morning devotions via WhatsApp. So thank you. Uh, we thank our media partners and we thank you again for spending your Tuesday night with us. Last Tuesday, Leadership Matters ninth episode earned a ratings bonanza across ZIZ's Facebook and YouTube pages with more than 12,000 people logging on to those two social media platforms alone to watch it live. Thanks again for joining us. Good night.